This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Okay, so we're on the roof. We've got a service call today on a walk-in cooler that's getting way too cold inside the box. So we're gonna open it up and see what we can find. So this is an interesting one. We've got a walk-in cooler and the complaint is that it's getting too cold in the box. Check this out. The thermostat says 32 degrees it said 29 when I walked in here what I'm gonna do is test the thermostat for you so we've got 115 volts coming into the thermostat and then it's jumping off of the power leg into the common circuit and across the contact we're open so the thermostat is not sending power to the solenoid valve okay but check this out the solenoid valve is stuck open Look at my liquid line temp and my suction line temp. It's ever so slightly bleeding by on the suction line. Ever so slightly. And it's not 448A, by the way. That was from my last job. This is actually R22. That's not gonna make a difference, we're not. But ever so slightly, it's bleeding by. And you can see by the, the thing frosting up. And it's bringing the box temp way cold. So we've got a bad solenoid valve. It's, it's got something stuck inside of it or something like that. Right, so we've got the system pumped down. We've got our new valve in there. We're gonna go ahead and sweat this new valve in. Um, because of the tonnage, I went with a half inch diameter or connections. But remember, it has nothing to do with the connection size. It has all to do with what the valve can handle. And I had a 3 8 valve, but it could only handle 1.6 tons. And this is like a two and a half ton system. So we wanna make sure that the valve, you also don't wanna go too big also, but um, this valve's perfect, so. So it is, you know, common to see bigger connection and just reducing with fittings. So you can see we've got a half inch valve and I'm reducing it down with a half inch by three eighths bushing. So we're gonna get that put in there real quick and then we're gonna change the thermostat. Okay, so the new solenoid valve is installed. We went ahead and used it as the junction box now. So there's wire going in, wire going out. We put a key to therm 10 plus defrost controller in there. We've still got to mount the sensing bolt properly put some more zip ties and clean it up. Right now we're in an anti-short cycle delay because I tested the thermostat and turned it on and off and so the temperature controller is basically in a delay. So it'll turn on here in a minute. Our vacuum is just about done. We'll go up there and check on that right now. Okay, so we got a little peculiar setup going on here. Now remember, this system is pumped down. So the refrigerant's stored in the receiver and the compressor. I'm not saying that a vacuum's not important, but what I'm saying is, is that there's still refrigerant in the system. There's still refrigerant in the oil of the compressor that's slowly boiling off. So I'm not as hypercritical about a vacuum on this system. Okay, I do have hoses going directly to here, but what I did was I went ahead at the, uh, and connected my gauges to the extra port, okay? And I was kind of cheating and using them as a micron gauge. I realized that's not the most effective way to do it, but again, I'm not so worried about the vacuum in this system. You're never gonna achieve a perfect vacuum on a system that's pumped down. And the reason why is because that valve right there, the king valve, is never 100% leak free. You're gonna get refrigerant. If I left this vacuum pump on here for two days, there probably wouldn't be any refrigerant left in the system when we're done because eventually it'll pull it right through those valves. So, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and close off these gauges. Uh, we're gonna close the gauge ports on the VCRTs, the vacuum port removal tools. And uh, looking at our Micron levels, they're actually kind of dropping right now. So again, I'm not so worried about it. We're not seeing a huge thing. I put a new liquid dryer in here too. I actually didn't have the right dryer. I just had a bi-flow, which will work fine. So um, you just gotta make sure, same thing with the dryers. You don't size them for the line size, you size them. Uh, you look at the line size and then you also look at the tonnage that the dryer can allow through it. So this one had plenty of room in it. So, okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, open the system up open the king valve and let the refrigerant through and watch the unit operate. I don't know if any of you guys caught it, but I actually had my hoses hooked up wrong. I had made that mistake when I was doing the vacuum. I had the low side hose on the liquid line and the high side hose on the suction line, but it didn't matter for the vacuum. So I switched it over after I opened the system up to positive pressure and I switched them over real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and purge these guys. Cool, good, running. 
Looking good. So that's it. I had already earlier checked the receiver level. It was good for the headmaster. So we're just gonna watch this guy operate. Okay, so the complaint was the walk-in cooler was getting too cold. And it was kind of an intermittent one. In all actuality, we had this happen a previous day before another tech was there and they said, hey, my walk-in cooler is getting too cold and we couldn't find anything wrong with it. It was an intermittent issue, okay? And what we found, obviously, was that when I got there, it was 32 degrees in the box when it was set for 38, okay? And immediately, I kind of had a hunch, so I jumped right to that solenoid valve and found that there was a temperature drop across the solenoid valve, um, and then also put my low side gauge on the evaporator since I was right there and noticed that I had pressure. Um, so the solenoid valve was getting stuck open. There was more than likely something stuck inside the solenoid valve. Now the valve that was there before, um, you know, had been there for a very long time. So I don't think that there was a sizing issue with that valve, but who knows? Okay. So anyways, I went ahead and replaced it, got the unit operational customer was happy. Um, you saw that, you know, a couple different things like the, the solenoid valve that I installed had bigger line sizes on it. Okay. And I explained that is very typical because you size a valve based off of the pressure drop and the tonnage of the system. Okay. And so essentially that valve by upsizing it made it, you know, it was, it basically fit in there better with what I had in my truck. That was all I had, but it was a better valve choice than going with a really small one. Okay. Um, the other thing was, was the liquid dryer. I didn't have a standard, uh, Sporlin, you know, um, liquid line filter dryer. Like I usually use, I just happened to have a, a, a bi flow for a heat pump, um, you know, Emerson dryer. So it worked the, the, the tonnage, you know, capacity of the dryer was still there. So, you know, you can't always do everything perfect. You know, sometimes you have to do what you have to do to get the customer going. Okay. So it is what it is. It was either that or not change the dryer. You know, I'd rather put that bi flow in there you know, and then just, you know, it, it work fine essentially. Okay. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos. You know, any questions you guys have, send me, you know, put a comment, send me an email, hvacrvideos at gmail.com or put a comment in the YouTube video. Um, I try to get to everything. I'm always interested in your guys' feedback, whether it be good or bad. If you have criticism for me, put it in the YouTube comments. I don't care. You know, I, I, can, I got tough skin. I can take it. So, Really appreciate it, and uh, we will catch you guys on the next one, okay?